makers of Campbell Soup present the Campbell Playhouse. Orson Welles, producer. Good evening. This is Orson Welles. Our offering this evening, It Happened One Night, is already a motion picture classic. Despite its tender years, it was born in 1934, shrewdly concerned with the oldest, in fact, the eternal subject, the way of a man with a maid, this time against the vigorous background of life among the quality and the not-so-quality of the Atlantic seaboard. It's been a favorite attraction among moviegoers everywhere since Mr. Frank Capra and the Columbia Pictures Corporation first blessed us all with it. Our guest stars might well have been tailored for the celebrated parts of Peter and Ellie. Mr. William Powell surely needs no alteration at all. Be the charming, happy-go-lucky newspaper man whom fate threw together on that now historic bus ride with a spoiled and spirited heiress certainly never more faultlessly imagined than tonight by Miss Miriam Hopkins. But first, before the madcap doings of this night begin to sweep us along at their own breakneck pace, Ernest Chappell suggests that we do a little posing, Mr. Chappell. Thank you, Orson Welles. And ladies and gentlemen, it's simply this. Suppose you had never tasted Campbell's tomato soup. Suppose you'd never had a sunny bowl of it beckon you with its welcoming color and with its tempting aroma. Suppose you'd never drawn your chair up to the table, lifted your spoon, and learned with that first smooth sip how its lively tomato flavor could wake up your appetite. And suppose you still had to try this soup that almost everyone likes best, Campbell's tomato soup, and still had to discover how it glorifies the flavor of fine tomatoes in a way all its own. Well, surely then you'd have a treat in store for you now, wouldn't you? Uh, but enough of supposing, it's likely you already know Campbell's tomato soup. Know how it can literally make a meal. How it can put delight in a simple lunch or family supper. Or pleasantly begin a dinner. You've probably had it often, and I hope you've had it lately. Because this season's crop of tomatoes was exceptionally luscious. And you'll enjoy their superb flavor now in Campbell's tomato soup. Now, wouldn't fragrant platefuls contribute to the enjoyment of your dinner, perhaps tomorrow night? And now, Orson Welles. And now, William Powell and Miss Miriam Hopkins in It Happened One Night. <laughs> I beg pardon, Mr. Andrews. What is it now, Captain? It's your daughter, sir. She won't very eat. Very well, she won't eat. But it's not very well, Mr. She Andrews. doesn't need to eat. You see, I'm uh, practically face-to-face -face with a mutiny. A mutiny? Yes. For the last 40 hours, I've had her food taken into her stateroom by three different stewards, the chef, the assistant chef, several busboys, and while it's not exactly nautical, this morning the first mate and the second mate both tried. Well, Mr. Andrews, sir, I don't like to burden you with details, sir. But she hit the first mate in the eye with a coffee cup. She rubbed a cheese omelet in one steward's hair. She threw a bowl of hot soup at... A bowl of hot soup. She'll eat when she gets hungry. I threatened to put my men in irons, and they say they prefer that. Get another tray ready. I'll take it in. It's dangerous business, Mr. Andrews. Kidnapping is no child's play. My daughter will realize before I'm through that I'm no child. If that's another tray, I'll wrap it around your ears. Oh, so it's you. Pardon my bursting in like this, Lady Ellie. I didn't have time to phone your secretary for an appointment. Don't be sarcastic. It won't help you any. I'm not going to eat. Not until you let me off this boat. Well, eh. Uh... And you can't get away with that kidnapping. A bunch of gorillas shoving me in a car. That crowd outside, the justice of the peace. They must have thought I was a criminal. Uh, the way your men... You're being unfair. I had one fellow that did nothing but explain to everybody that you were a harmless lunatic who would escape from an asylum. What? Nobody thought you were a criminal at all. If anybody wanted particulars, my man told him you had delusions. You were Mary Antoinette. Oh. I couldn't do better than that for you, could I? Where do you think you're taking me on this yacht, Father? Here and there, South America to start with. South America? Yes, my child, South America. Both sides of South America. You remember the map? One side is painted yellow and the other side green and brown. After you've seen the yellow from the yacht, that is, because you won't be allowed to land, you'll get a nice change to the green and brown. 
And then... You'll I... have a corpse on your hands. That's what you'll have. We're leaving Miami in an hour as soon as we get some supplies aboard. I won't eat a thing while I'm on this boat. In that event, we won't need so many supplies. What do you expect to accomplish by all this? I'm already married. I'll get it annulled if it takes every penny I've got. Well, what have you got against King West? Nothing much. I, I just think he's a fake, that's all. He's one of the best flyers in this country. Right now, he's planning to break the round-the-world record. Now, who's going to finance him? Let me guess. You. Well, he's no good, and you know it. You married him only because I told you not to, and that's why you're not eating, Ellie. Because I've been sending food to you. Well, you're a fool not to eat this billet mignon before it gets cold. Look, Ellie, just touch it with a knife, and it melts. Well, if I give in now, will you give me a chance to prove later that you're wrong? Well, I always give people a chance to prove anything that they can prove. You know that, okay. Ellie. Okay. You've won. Get my robe from the closet, will you? All right, I will. Now, I'll tell you what, Ellie. You give me your words. You won't try any funny business. We'll go ashore tonight and have a nice dinner at the Everglades. Hey, Ellie. Ellie, let me up. Ellie. Not a chance. And quit rattling that knob. I've just locked the door. You can't get away with it, Jimmy. I have gotten away with it. All right, Ellie. I've got the key to the stateroom in my pocket. You can't get out till you let me out of this closet. Ellie, you hear me? I heard you. I was just wondering how... I've got it. What? In case you've forgotten, there's a porthole right here. Port? Well, Ellie, you wouldn't. I certainly would. Ellie, yeah. keep away from that porthole. If you hear a splash, don't worry. You always splash when you die. You're crazy. You can't do it. Ellie, I order you not to. Anybody think he can order me? Bye, Pop. Hello, operator. I want to send a straight wire. Lovington Detective Agency, New York. Watch all roads, air transports, and railway stations out of Miami. Keep close tabs on King Wesley. Intercept all messages. Hellcat just escaped. Huh? What do you mean you can't transmit the word Hellcat? Okay, make it my loving daughter, Ellie. Bus leave it for Jacksonville, Charleston, Richmond, Washington, Philadelphia, and New York. Passengers will please display their tickets. Here I am, boy, right back at this post. Oh, here's the ticket you asked me to buy you, lady. Thank you very much. You can keep the change. Oh, thank you, lady. Thank you. What'd you say? What's, what's well, going on over there? Well, over there, where uh, uh, some gentleman's calling somebody long distance and over his there pals is cheering him on. Yes, well, that's clear from here. They, they've been drinking, if you ask me. Yes. Charleston, Richmond, Washington, Philadelphia, and New York. Get him on the phone, Petey, and yeah, you tell him. Get him on the phone. Hey, hey, hey. Quiet, you one. guys. This phone booth is no convention hall. How can I talk? Yeah, you're right, Petey, but you tell him. Yeah, yeah. Let, let, let him know what he can do with his job, Petey. Quiet. You tell him. My distinguished managing editor's voice is just starting quiet. to come in. Quiet. Hello? Hello, you big baboon. You know who this is. This is Peter Grant. P as in pusillanimous, which is what you are. Yeah. E as in elephant, like your feet. Yeah, like your feet. T as in thick-headed, which yeah. is... Yeah. Oh, you remember me now, huh? Sure, I'll tell you what I called about, that telegram firing me. Well, you can't fire me because I resigned. Let me tell you something else. You fired... I've resigned the best news hound your filthy sheet ever had. Yeah, boy, yeah you just make it do it. But quiet. Go ahead. Hey, the trouble with you, my fat-headed friend, is that you wouldn't know good copy if it came up and introduced itself to you by name. I'm through with you and your paper. I'm through with all papers. I'm through with stupidity. Ah, boy. I'll never write another newspaper story for you or anybody else if I have to starve. Well, now, now wait a minute. That's going too far, Pete, because did you ever stop? Because let me tell you, Pete, Fine. now... Uh, it's none of your business what I'm going to do. I may build a subway to Moscow. It's none of your business. What's that? I seem to have a lot of money for long-distance calls to New York. Ha-ha. <laughs> <laughs> hey, listen, Beetle Brain. Why don't you get your secretary to tell you when you get a collect call? Uh-oh. Take it easy. Remember your blood pressure. 
Goodbye, molasses mine. Yeah, yeah goodbye, molasses mine. Be your molasses <laughs> mine. You mind if I use that to buy medicine, Edison? No, not at all. That's my farewell gift to you. Is my chariot ready? Oh, I'm busting on leaving a couple of seconds, Pete. Oh. All aboard! Hey, driver, wait for me! All aboard! All aboard? Hey, goodbye, Pete! Goodbye, goodbye, goodbye boys! Goodbye. Woo! <laughs> Almost didn't make it. Okay, buddy, take your seat. All right. Well, make up your mind, lady. Get in or get out. Why don't you look where you're going? I was looking. It was All you. Right, you two. All right, take your seats. You got a long trip ahead of you. You can finish the argument in North Carolina or Delaware, but not here. Oh, and goodbye, everybody. Pardon me, lady. Yes? Would you mind taking those papers off that seat so I can sit down? You see, I don't like sitting on newspapers. I did once, and all the headlines came off on my white pants. I'm not interested. Yeah, but the people in the town were. They followed me all over and read the news from the seat of my pants. Some of them still have cricks in their backs. I need this seat for, uh, for my luggage and things. Your luggage is on the rack, and that seat's for two. I don't like it any more than you do. Oh, all right, all right. And tell that man not to drive so fast. Are you talking to me? Yes. Tell that man not to drive so fast. Oh, ma'am, don't drive so fast, ma'am. There. That'll teach him. Could you bring me back a bromo? Hey, young lady. What do you want? I'm all covered with brambles, and don't say it's not your fault. Why don't you leave me alone? He was a good 50 yards away before I could get going. And then after I got through chasing him, there I was in the middle of the brush and not a sign of the skunk. Well, if chasing skunks is your hobby, all right. I'm not interested. Uh, maybe this will interest you. Your overnight bag's gone. What? Yeah, I was getting out of the bus myself when I saw that mug that sat in front of us grab your bag and run off with it. <gasps> I ran after him like I told you, and he got away like I told you. Oh, but it can't be. Everything I had was in it. My clothes and my money. Well, and... you still got your purse. Oh. Your ticket must be in that. Well, my ticket and $4 in cash. Well, that's what I've got to get to New York on. Hey, you can wire for more money when we get to Jacksonville. Oh, but I can't, you see. I... Yes, I guess I will. I'll report it to the driver. About your bag, I mean. No, I'd rather you didn't. Don't be a fool. You lost your bag. The company will make good. I'll report it for you. I don't want it reported. And please be good enough to stay out of my private affairs. Hey, you got the whole thing wrong, lady. The fellow that stole the bag is in your private affairs. I just tried to get them back. Oh, Lord! <laughs> You can sit here if you want to. No, thank you. There's a seat back there, next to a gentleman. Next to a what? Oh, all right. Find out your mistake for yourself. That's nothing to be a mistake from now on. Pardon me. Oh, is this seat vacant? Why, sure. Sure, sit down, sister. Thank you. My name's Shapely. Shapely is as Shapely does, I always say. <laughs> get it? I said, get it? Oh, yes, I get it. And uh, let me tell you, sister, you made no mistake sitting next to me. You know, you got to be awful careful on these buses who you hit it up with. Well, I remember once when I was coming through North Carolina, when I... <laughs> I got together with a good-looking dame just like you. Well, sir, I was just starting to make time with her when she got yanked off the bus. And who do you think she was? I said, who do you think she was? Your grandmother. Oh, you're kidding, huh? Yeah. Well, sir, she was a girl bandit. The one the papers have been writing about. What do you know about that? I said, what do you know about that? Nothing. Well, what's the matter, sister? You ain't saying much. Seems to me you're doing all right without any assistance. Oh, right there with the answers, huh? Oh, only don't think I'm sore. Because I'm not. Matter of fact, you're my type. I could go for you in a big way. Believe you me. Well, believe you me, you bore me to distraction. Kidding, huh? No. I uh, beg pardon, mister. Yeah? There's a seat in the back of the bus for you. What's the idea? Uh, I'd like to sit with my wife, if you don't mind. Do what? Did you say wife? Yeah. On your way. Oh. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> I, I was just trying to <laughs> make things pleasant. If you promise not to snap my head off, I'd like to thank you. Forget it. I didn't do it for you. His voice is beginning to get on my nerves. <laughs> Bar. Here you are, folks. 
Teddy Full Star Cigarette Magazine. Here, boy. Yes, sir. Give me that money. A dollar sixty for a box of candy and you with only four dollars. How do you expect to get to New York at the rate you're going? That's none of your business. You're on a budget from now on. I won't stand for it. I won't. Say, you are a spoiled brat, aren't you? Just the kind that would marry King Wesley. You're perfect. What? What was that? You and Wesley should make an ideal team. Oh, you must have me confused with someone else. I... Quit kidding. <laughs> it was all over the front page at the last stop. Lucky for you, I got the only paper. Oh, Take my advice and grab the first bus back to Miami. I don't want your advice. I suppose you notified my father. What for? Oh, he'd be sure to give you some money for being such a bright boy. What a lovely mind you have. Oh, don't tell me you haven't already done it. I'm not that interested. You, King Wesley, your father, that's all a lot of hope for me. Yes, sir. I want this telegram sent exactly as it is. Can you read? Joe Gordon, New York Evening Mail. Dear Bird Brain. Thought you'd like to know the biggest story of the year. Just dropped into my hat. Stop. I know where Ellen Andrews is. Stop. How would you like to have the story? Question mark. I thought so. Well, try and get it. Stop. And what I said about never writing another line for you still goes. No love, no kisses, no regard. Signed, Peter. Send a collect. Attention, attention, now look. We just got word the road up ahead is so torn, we can't take a chance. We're going to spend the night here. Now, if any of you passengers want to sleep in a bus, it's okay. Those that don't, there's an auto camp up the road a ways called the Twin Apples. I made all the arrangements. Here it is. Your hotel for the night, lady. The Twin Apples Auto Camp. Clean, self-respecting, wholesome, under new management. Good evening. I'm the new management. Good evening. I just put some more blankets in your place. I do hope you're going to like it, Mrs. Grant. Your husband said you're very fussy. Oh, but you got to excuse me. I got to see about the other people. My husband said. <laughs> That's me, always talking out of school. Allow me to open the door for you, my dear. If you'll precede me, my dear. Go on, you brat, get in there. Like it? Not much. I think it's beautiful. Two charming beds, a table, two chairs, an oil burner for cooking, all the compass of home. I'd like an explanation, please. I just had the unpleasant sensation of hearing you referred to as my husband. And I... That's right. I forgot to tell you I registered as Mrs., Mr., and Mrs. Mr. and Mrs. You don't think that I'll put up with that, do you? Hey, wait a minute. Let's get something straightened out right now. If you've got any idea that I'm interested in, you just forget it. What I've done is a matter of simple mathematics. These cabins cost two bucks a night. I'm very sorry to inform you, Mrs., of Mr. and Mrs., that our family purse won't stand for separate establishments. Well, I hope you don't expect me to stay here under the same roof. I don't expect you to do anything. I furnish you with a place to sleep, and if you don't like it, you can, well, you can spend the night someplace else. It's all right with me. My first impression of you wasn't far wrong. I know. A gentleman like King Wesley would vacate and let you have the place for yourself. Well, I'm not King Wesley, thank heaven. What do you think you're doing now? Well, for your information, this is a clothesline I'm fastening to the wall. Now watch me closely. I have nothing to conceal, but the hand is quicker than the eye. I now put two extra blankets, one from each cot, over the clothesline. The room, you will observe, is now cut in half. We each have our own private little cubicle. I suppose that makes everything quite all right. Does for me. I like privacy when I retire. Prying eyes annoy me. You may or may not know, but at this moment, I'm in my undershirt. Thanks to the blanket, unseen by any eyes but mine. Are you implying that I... Never can tell about your kind. As long as we're on opposite side of the blanket. Uh, it's the walls of Jericho. That's what it is. Hey, you ever hear of the walls of Jericho? I know my Bible as well as you do. The Israelites were behind those walls, and Watch McCollum blew his trumpet, and the walls came down. It wasn't Watch McCollum, it was Who's It? But you've got the general idea. Joshua, that's who it was. Joshua and the trumpet. I'm all out of trumpets. But here's my other pair of pajamas for you. Catch. I got them. Now listen, you're not really serious about all this, are you? I'm serious about getting undressed. Perhaps you'd like to know how a man undresses. 
No two men do it alike. I wouldn't know. Yeah, that's why I'm telling you. You know, I once knew a chap who kept his hat on until he was completely undressed. Very comical effect. I doubt it. Years later, his secret came out. He wore a toupee. As a matter of fact, I have an idiosyncrasy all my own. My coat comes off first, then the tie, then the shirt, then, uh, among the conservatives, the pants. But that's where I'm different. I go for the shoes next. You listening? Left shoe, right shoe. That's all. Sorry. Now, if I was a centipede... I get the idea. Did you have any uh, similar confessions to make? I'm very willing to listen. You've already taken off your coat, I'm sure. Now, uh, after that... After that? The blanket will keep my secret. I suppose so. What do you mean, you suppose so? You're absolutely right. The walls of Jericho will protect you from the big bad wolf. The night's rest will do you a lot of good. Hmm. I'm really tired. Do you mind if I sing? I generally sing myself to sleep. Wouldn't do me any good if I did mind, would it? No. Oh, if I had the wings of an angel... They, you, you don't know how it goes on from there, do you? No. Oh. Well, that's a catch in my singing. That's the only line I know. Do you mind if I sing it again? Oh, if I had the wings of an angel... All finished. So if you want me to do it again, I don't mind. No, I caught the drift of it. Are you in bed now? Yes. Don't you sing? Not when there's nothing to sing about. Oh. By the way, who are you? Who am I? Why... I am the whippoorwill that cries in the night. I'm the soft morning breeze that caresses your lovely face. I'm the waiter with the water for your daughter. I'm the... Have you a name by any chance? Oh, my name? Peter Grant. Peter Grant. Hmm. I don't like it. Well, pleased to have met you, Mr. Grant. Pleasure's all mine. You know, I've been thinking about what a tough life you had. Twice a missus and still unkissed. I can get along without your sympathy. I bet you're in an awful hurry to get back to New York, aren't you? Your first husband? I probably don't count. I say I probably don't count. Hmm? Good night, Mr. Grant. Good night. Wake up. What? Oh, dear. What time is it? Eight o'clock. Time to get up. Here, I got something for you. I'll throw it over the blanket. Catch. Oh, it's too fast. Yeah. But not shopping. Groceries, toilet goods, and oh. get up. Breakfast will be ready in no time. I'll have mine in bed. Hey, stop talking nonsense. Gold deluxe. I'm going to count ten. If you're not out of bed by then, I'll come around that blanket and yank you out myself. If you dare. One, two... Three, four, five, peeping, Tom. six, seven, eight, nine. Come out, I'm out. Good. You'll find the showers and uh, things right back in the second cottage. Outside? Certainly outside. Uh, you just been brought up wrong. That's what's the trouble with you. All the best homes have them outside. you so disgustingly cheerful this morning. Yeah. Must be the spring. Mm. Couldn't be the company. Oh, not a chance. Look, Mr. Grant, what do you do? Or for a living, I mean. Nothing, if I can help it. Well, don't you work? Oh, sometimes. What at? Whatever the least work. Don't tell me they have house detectives in auto camps. Come in! Mm -hmm. Your bus leaves in five minutes, mister. Oh, thanks. Go, Lilox. You know how to pack? Well, my maid, General. Uh, you're going to learn right now. Here's my bag. And to start with, you don't just throw gents' pants in any which way. No. No. You fold them first. This is the Campbell Playhouse. Orson Welles, producer. You are listening to our presentation of It Happened One Night, starring William Powell and Miriam Hopkins. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.
This is Ernest Chappell, ladies and gentlemen, welcoming you back to the Campbell Playhouse. In just a moment, we shall resume our presentation of It Happened One Night. But in the meantime, this too happened one night at the supper table in a home perhaps not unlike your own. Listen. Dear, I, I've got a confession to make. This is not my own homemade soup. No, tastes mighty good. We will have some more. It is good, isn't it? It's Campbell's. I just couldn't find time today to make soup, so I thought I'd try Campbell's just once. Well, dear, if I were you, I wouldn't stop at once. Let's try some more Campbell's soups. If they're all as good as this, there's not much need of your going to all the bother of making soup anymore. This is great. And that's what's been happening in homes everywhere, as one good home cook after another has tried Campbell's soups, compared them with her own, and realized they must have been made in the true home way, delicious, wholesome, and nourishing. And discovering how her family enjoy their fine flavor, she's given up making soup and turned her soup making over to Campbell's. So I'd like to invite you, if you haven't already done so, to let this happen one night in your home. Do that, and I believe you too will let Campbell's make your soups for you. Make them from then on. And now Orson Welles resumes our Campbell Playhouse presentation of It Happened One Night, starring Miriam Hopkins and William Powell. I must say. Won't even let a man finish a song. Come on, you. All right, come on. Hurry up, folks. Hurry up, all out now. Hey, that's in pretty deep, young fellow. It sure is. That song made a mess out of these roads, all right. Excuse me. What do you want, Shapeless? The name is Shapely. I want to talk to you. What about? Something personal, if you don't mind. I mind very much. I'll give you a minute. Let's go over in the back of the bus. All right, what is it? I, uh, I thought you might want to look at a newspaper I bought the last time we stopped. This piece about the multimillionaire heiress I can't find. I, uh, I thought you uh, might want to look at it. Traveling like this, you know, you kind of lose track of what's going on in the world. Thanks. It says here they're offering a reward of $10,000 for her now. Be kind of sweet if a fellow could collect that. Well, 10,000 smackers are always sweet. You know what I'd do if I was to run across that dame? What? I'd go 50-50 with you. Oh, that's what's on your mind. $5,000 or I grab the works. I see. You know, I guess I was pretty lucky running into you. You're just the man I need. I can use a smart guy like you. Oh, well, I, I know my way around, I guess. There isn't anybody watching you, is there? No. You pack a gat? A what? A gat, a gat. Let me frisk you. Got any fireworks on you? What? No. Well, that's all right. I got a couple of machine guns in my suitcase. I'll let you have one of them. A machine gun? Yeah, I expect to have a little trouble up north. May have to shoot it out at the cops. Well, sometimes the law gets stubborn, you know? Shoot, shoot it out at the cops? I'll talk to the killer. He'll take care of you. Good guy, the killer. The, the killer? Yeah. That's who I'm taking her to. The big boy himself. Are you... You're not... Kidnapped, where are you? What do you think? We're not interested in that penny handy reward, you and I. Ten thousand bucks, chicken feed. We're holding her for a million smackers. And I say, look, I, I, I didn't know it was anything like this. See, I, uh... Well, you know now. You're in this thing with both feet and you're staying in. Get me? You know too much. Ever heard of Bugs Dooley? 
No. He looked something like you, but he was kind of talkative. You want to know what happened? He was found in the bottom of the river one day, a rock tied around his neck in a bathtub full of cement. <laughs> Poor Bugs, he couldn't take it. Blew his brains out besides. Well, that's terrible. He had it coming to him. Yeah, oh, sure, sure, but uh, don't you worry about me. I don't talk, and I, I never talk. Okay, only remember not to talk. Now beat it and stay away from that bus. Yes, sir. Start walking toward those woods, and remember, I got a rod in this pocket aimed right at the middle of your back. Yeah, I'll, I'll remember. Why? I think you better run. Yeah, sure, and anything you say. Do you realize we've been walking nearly three hours? Oh, we should never have left the bus. Yes, we should. You can't tell who else besides Shapley bought that paper. Poor Mr. Shapley. The rate he started, he's probably crossed two straight li state lines by now. But it's good exercise for him. Well, it's not good for me. I'm tired. All right, all right. We'll register at that haystack there. Maybe they got a suite with bath. I thought we were really going to find a place to sleep. That's it. Well, we're not going to sleep out here. I don't know about you, but that's what I'm going to do. Pick yourself a bed, like this. There's a lot of hay on the ground. Peter. What is it? I'm hungry. Just your imagination. No, it isn't. I'm hungry and scared. You can't be hungry and scared at the same time. If you're scared, it scares the hunger out of you. I'm sure you're right, but I'm still hungry. Hey, don't you ever think of anything except your stomach? Here, I'll fix your bed. I'll fix my own bed. Peter, it's, it's not very comfortable. If I lie flat on my back, then the hay gets in my side when I turn. That's easy. Stop turning. You're becoming terribly disagreeable lately. Snap my head off every time I open my mouth. Now, don't open your mouth. If being with me is so disagreeable to you, you can leave. You can leave any time you see fit. Nobody's keeping you here. I can get along. I said, I can get along. Did you hear? I said... Peter. Peter! Peter! Oh, where are you? What's the matter? Oh, Peter. What got into you? Oh, Peter, I'm so scared. Well, you're not scared now, are you? Uh, no. Well, let go of me. Oh, excuse me. Just want to find you something to eat. Hope you like watermelon. Why didn't you tell me? Here, now eat your head off. I don't want it now. You're enough to drive a guy crazy. Lie down and go to sleep. I'm not tired. Lie down. All right. Too bully. And the trouble with you is you've always had your own way. That's why you're such a mess now. You attach importance to the wrong thing. Right now, there's only one thought in your mind to get back to King Wesley. That's not so. Don't interrupt me. Always chasing after something you think you want. Oh, you know, only you don't really want it. The truth is, you're running away. From yourself, mostly. The world's full of people like you. Don't know what they want. Do you know? Sure. What? I just want to be a little alone, that's all. Life's all right if you don't try too hard. After all, you can only eat three meals a day, only sleep in one bed. You sound like a hobo. I am. I only work when I have to. Doesn't sound very exciting. I'm not looking for excitement. That's your racket. You know a lot about me and my racket, don't you? Yeah, I can read you like a book. Hmm. I'm just wasting my time. You're destined to be a dope the rest of your life. Good night. Good night and pleasant dreams. I said, pleasant dreams. I heard you. Pleasant dreams to you. say we are supposed to be doing? Hitchhiking? Well, you've given me a pretty good idea of the hiking, but when does the hitching come in? Ah, it's a little early yet. All right, the car's up. Well, if it's just the same to you, we'll wait right here till they come. All right. You've probably never walked further before than from your car to some cafe. Oh, Peter, there's a car. Gone. It certainly is. Well, what if nobody stops for us? They'll stop all right. Just a matter of knowing how to hail them. You're an expert, I suppose. The best in the world. No end to your compliments, is there? No end at all. Mm -hmm. You see, a lot of people think they can get a ride by just holding out their hand. Well, that's wrong. It's all in the thumb. Unless you know how, you never get anywhere. Just a failure. But, but if you hang your thumb right, it's got to work. It depends on how you feel. There are different ways to do it. For instance, number one is a short 
jerky movement. Mm -hmm. That shows your independence. You don't care if they stop or not because you got some money in your pocket, see? Oh, you're wonderful. And number two is a, a wider movement in the direction you want to go. A smile goes with this one. That means you got a couple of brand new stories about the farmer's daughter. You're a genius. That's what you oh, are. Oh, that's nothing. Oh. Now, you take number three. That's the real thing. That's the pathetic one when you're broke and hungry and everything looks black. That's a long movement. It starts about a foot outside on your, your shoulder and then over to the other shoulder with a follow-through. Amazing, that's what it is. Amazing. But you, you've got to have a drooping chin. Oh, well, you can't have everything. <gasps> Here comes the car. Yeah, just watch me. Keep your eye on my thumb. I'm still watching your thumb. Yeah, something must have gone wrong. I guess I'll try number two. When you get up to 100, wake me up. your thumb. Maybe if you stood on your head. Shut up. Do you mind if I try? You? Ha-ha. Uh -huh. oh, you're such a smart aleck. Nobody can do anything but you. That's right. Well, I'll show you how to stop a car. Oh, my you haven't got a chance. You think so? Well, we'll see. What are you going to do? Well, I'm not going to use my thumb. If you want to know... Hey, drop that skirt. You don't understand. That's what I'm using for a thumb. You want a lift, uh, folks? Oh, thank you, mister. Why didn't you take all your clothes off? You could have stopped 40 cars. We didn't need 40 cars. Well, here's another auto camp. A new home, Goldilocks. In you go. Well, here we are on the last lap. Yes? Here we are. Tomorrow morning, you'll be back with your father and Wesley. Yes. Tomorrow morning. What are you doing? I'm putting some tacks in the wall for the... For the walls of Jericho? Yep. Walls of Jericho. Well, give me that blanket, will you? Mm -hmm. Here it is. Thanks. <laughs> you certainly outsmarted your father. You ought to be very happy. Yes. I ought to be very happy. Here's some pajamas for you. Thank you. Well, I'm thinking of it. Am I going to see you in New York? No. Why not? I don't make a policy of running around with married women. Oh, there's no harm in coming to see us. Not interested. Won't I ever see you again? What do you want to see me for? I've served my purpose. I brought you and Wesley together, didn't I? That's what you wanted, wasn't it? Peter, have you ever been in love? Now, come to think of it, I've probably done the world a great favor. Got two pinheads out of circulation. Haven't you ever wanted to fall in love? A me? Well, there's no one else on the other side of the blanket, is there? Oh, me? Yes. Well, I've thought about it. Who hasn't? If I've ever met the right kind of a girl, somebody that's real, somebody that's alive, they don't come that way anymore. I suppose not. Certainly, I thought about falling in love. As a matter of fact, it may seem funny to you, Miss Ellie Andrews, but I'm just like everybody else, even if I haven't got any money, even if I'm not King Wesley. Of course you're like everybody else. I mean, you're not. I mean... Hey. Stay on your own side of the blanket. Well, I didn't know if you could hear me from where I was. I can hear everything you've got to say. Well, all I've got to say is this. I love you. You're married. I'm not really married. And anyway, I don't care. I love you. Oh, we can run away. Everything will take care of itself. Please, Peter. You can't just disappear out of my life now. I couldn't live without you. Oh, Peter. Go back to your bed. But, Peter, don't you understand? I mean it. I found out the last few days. Oh, I found out so much. I know now. Go back to your bed. You mean you don't... Go back to your bed. Peter. All right. Sorry. Right. And go to sleep. Yes, Peter. I'll go to sleep. I know it's late, but I've got to get to New York tonight. Look, I paid $200 for this watch a year ago. And all I'm asking is $20. But this is a gasoline station, buddy, not a hot shop. Now, listen, fellow. I'll tell you what I'll do. When I come back in the morning, 
I'll buy it back from you and give you $20 profit. What do you say? I ain't used to this kind of thing. Okay, it's a deal. Hiya, Gordon. Get out of here. Now, wait a minute, Gordon. Get out. Joe, listen. Don't Joe me. Okay, Joe, listen. Those wires I sent you are on the level. It's the biggest story of the year. I've come to give it to you. You mean about the Andrews girl? That's it. I've got it all written up right here in my pocket, all ready to go. All I want is $500. What do you need 500 bucks for? To, to tear down the walls of Jericho. What? I, well, never mind. Listen. To start with, Ellen Andrews is going to have her marriage annulled, and then she's going to marry somebody else. You're drunk. Would a story like that be worth 500 bucks to you? If it's on the level. Well, that's the story. On the level. Who's she going to marry? Me, Joe. Now, I know you're drunk. Get out of here. And don't annoy me anymore. Now, listen, Joe. You've got to get this money for me now. Minutes count. She's waiting for me in the auto camp outside of Philadelphia. I've got to get right back. She doesn't know I'm gone. I figured it'll take about $500 to get us married and set until I can find something to do. Real story, all right. On a way to join her husband, Ellen Andrews falls in love. Listen here, Pete. If you're kidding me... Open that door! Just a minute. Uh, what's the matter? Where has your husband gone, young woman? Uh, uh, my husband? If he is your husband. Oh, isn't he here? You know he ain't. He left an hour ago with his suitcase. Fell at the oh. gas station up the road, told me. Borrowed $20 from him. Well, he, uh, he'll be back. Uh-huh. <laughs> That's why I took his suitcase. Well, I, I, I don't understand There's only one I... thing you've got to understand. You to get out of here right away. But you can't put me out at the crack of dawn. Oh, oh, yes, I can. You want me to call the police or will you go peaceful? Well, can I use your telephone? I've decided to make a call. I've been phoning. You ain't gonna stick me for no phone calls. You can phone from the sheriff's office. Come on, start packing, you hussy. Oh, believe me, this is a terrible mistake. Don't I know it? Hey, listen, Hank. This is Gordon Hole, the morning edition. Break down the front page. Then send me a couple of rewrite men right away. Ellen Andrews isn't going to marry King Wesley at all. Yes, I know what I'm saying. She's going to give him the air. Wait a minute, Hank. There's another phone driving me crazy. Hello. What? What? Ellen Andrews? You're crazy. Oh. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Okay, grab a card and stay with him. Hank. Hank, forget what I just told you. I was having a nightmare, Hank. Bill Graham just called. Ellen Andrews has phoned her father from an auto camp near Philadelphia to come and get her. He's getting a police escort. Wesley's going along, too. Andrew says he won't contest the marriage after all. He'll do anything to get her back. She's been traveling by bus. The minute she read her father and Wesley made up, she phoned in. And one thing more, Hank. Call up the police department. Tell them to find Peter Grant. Send out a general alarm. I want that drunken bum thrown in jail. Oh. Ellen Andrew. Returns home. Marriage halted by father to be resumed. Ellen Andrews and Aviator to have home wedding as love triumphs. Lovers reunited as father B. Glad to be home, says Ellen. Ellen Andrews to be married tomorrow. Hello, Dad. I, I, I knocked several times. I'm Ellie. sorry. I, I must have been daydreaming. Uh, everything's set, uh, Ellie. You look lovely. My child, you look perfectly lovely. And be a beautiful bride tomorrow. Are you pleased with your gown? Uh, I said, are you pleased with your gown, Ellie? Uh, oh, the gown. Yes, it's beautiful. Isn't it? Uh, Ellie, what's the matter? What's wrong? Nothing. You've been acting so strangely since you, your return. I'm worried. Ellie, isn't this what you wanted? You haven't changed your mind about King, have you? Oh, no. Because if you have, it isn't too late. You know how I feel about him. All I want is to make you happy. I know that. Ellie, what is it? Aren't you happy, child? Oh, Dad. Mm, I thought so. I knew there was something on your mind. What is it, Ellie? Ellie, you haven't... You haven't fallen in love with someone else, have you? Have you? Yes. 
I haven't seen you cry since you were a baby. This must be serious. Where'd you meet him? On the way from Miami. Don't tell me you fell in love with the bus driver. Oh, no. Who is he? Well, I, don't, I don't know very much about him, except that I love him. Well, everything will be all right. All we got to do because you... He child. despises me. He despises everything I stand for. He thinks I'm spoiled and pampered now, and selfish. He sounds wonderful. With an insight like that, I think that he you... He doesn't would... think so much of you either. No? He blames you for everything that's wrong with me. He thinks you raised me stupidly. The man's crazy. He's marvelous. I'd like to have a talk with him. No use. I practically threw myself at him and he left me. Anyway, we can call this wedding off. Oh, no, I'm going through with it. That's silly, child. It's ridiculous the way you feel. Well, that's no. Not... Got to settle down. settle down. Really doesn't matter how or where or with whom it. Doesn't matter. Wouldn't do any good to walk out on King now. Wouldn't make any difference. Never see Peter again. Peter, is that his name, Peter? Yes. Peter Grant. Peter Grant. Peter Grant. What? Do you know him? No, oh, but uh, I got a letter from a Peter Grant this morning. Never heard of the fellow before in my life. Here it is. Uh, uh, dear Mr. Andrews, I'd like to have a talk with you about a financial matter in connection with your daughter, Peter Grant. Oh. Yeah. That was his interest in me. The reward. Oh, I shouldn't have read it. Oh, yes, you should. Are you going to see him? I don't think so. I don't see any reason. Oh, please see him. Pay him off. He's entitled to his reward. He did an excellent job of keeping me thoroughly entertained. It's worth every penny he gets. Tell him I said so. Oh, oh may I come in? Oh, oh sure, man. King. Oh, come in. Oh, so. I'll, I'll be going. I know you're not supposed to see me in my wedding dress till tomorrow, but I'm so glad to see you, King. Here's some champagne. Have a drink. Oh, thanks, Ellie. Oh, now, how do you feel, Ellie? Are you happy? Happy? Why shouldn't I be happy? I'm getting the handsomest man in captivity. That's you, King, in case you don't know. Here, King, let's have another drink. Let's drink to us. We finally made it, didn't we? We certainly did. It's up to us now. I want our life to be full of excitement. Let's never let up. Never a dull moment. Let's get on a merry-go-round and never get off. I promise you'll, you'll never let me get off. It's the only way to live. No time to think. Just keep going. Whatever you say. Oh, Mary. I knew you'd say that, King. That's why it's going to be so wonderful being married to you. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Oh, come, drink up to you and me. Good afternoon, Mr. Andrews. Uh, you're Peter Grant? Yes. And before we begin, let me get this straight. It was my idea to come here just before this wedding ceremony. Not that I mind getting a load of this three-ring circus you're pulling. I've always wanted to see what love looks like, triumphant. I haven't had a good laugh in a week. But since you insisted that this was the only time you could I'm, see me... I'm, uh, leaving for California, young man, right after the ceremony. And I wanted to get this financial affair of yours straightened out, whatever it is. You don't know what it is? About your daughter. I don't know what it is. My daughter told me nothing about any financial claims you have on her. That's typical of your daughter. Take those things for granted. Why did she think I lugged her all the way from Miami? For the love of it? You misunderstand me. When I say she didn't tell me anything about it, I meant not until a little, little while ago. She told me to say she thinks you're entitled to anything you can get. Oh, she does, huh? Isn't that sweet of her? You don't, I suppose. Well, I don't know. I have to see um, what you base your claim. I presume you feel justified. If I didn't, I wouldn't be here. Got it all itemized. Want me to read it to you? Go ahead. Cash outlay, 860. Top coat ruined by lipstick, $15. One pair of pajamas left behind at Philadelphia, kept by auto camp proprietor in lieu of rent, $6. $8 when new. Usury to, re to redeem pledged watch, $20. Total, $49.60. Is uh, that all you want? Forty-nine dollars and sixty cents. Well, if you're thinking of the time I wasted, forget it. I'll throw that in. Well, that, that's very generous of you, but I... Now, what's the matter? Isn't it cheap enough? A trip like that would cost you a thousand dollars, maybe more. Let me understand you correctly. You mean you want forty-nine sixty in addition to the ten thousand? What ten thousand? The reward. Who said anything about a reward? I'm afraid I'm a little confused. The I... I assumed you were coming here for... All I want is forty-nine sixty. I... I wish you'd write me out a check and let me get out of this place. It gives me the jitters. You're a peculiar check. Now, we go into that some other time. 
the average man go after the reward. All you see to Listen, be... Listen, did anybody ever make a sucker out of you? This is a matter of principle. Something you probably don't understand. When somebody takes me for a buggy ride, I don't like the idea of having to pay for the privilege. Uh, you were uh, taken for a buggy ride? Yes. Lap robe, buggy whip, all the trimming. How about the check? Do I get it? Here you are. Thanks. You mind if I ask you something, frankly? Go ahead. I'm not promising to answer. Do you love my daughter? Any guy that would fall in love with your daughter should have his head examined. That's precisely my opinion, but answer my question. She just grabbed herself a perfect running mate, King Wesley, the pill of the century. And what she needs is a guy that would poke her in the nose every day, if it was coming to her or not. If you had half the brains you're supposed to have, you'd have done it yourself long ago. Every word of what you say is gospel truth, but you still haven't answered my question. Normal human being couldn't live under the same roof with her without going nuts. She's my idea of nothing, less than nothing. No, I take that back. You're my idea of less than nothing. I'm still not able to quarrel with one single thing you've said, but I wish you'd answer my question. Do you love her? Yes. But don't hold that against me. I'm a little screwy myself. I might as well continue. That fellow Grant is a... fine. He's okay. You're an idiot to let him get away from you, Ellie. Oh, don't talk to me about it. He never wanted it. the reward. He wouldn't take it, Ellie. He just asked for $49.60. What? That's for what he spent on you. It's a matter of principle with him. Says you took him for a took him for a ride. You're lying. No, I'm not, Ellie. He loves you. He told me so. Told you what? Well, sing it again. He loves you. Ellie, you don't want to be married to a, a oh, mug Dad. like Wesley, do you? Dad, you're the grandest dad in the world. And I don't worry about Wesley. I oh. can buy off Wesley with money. That's all he wants. And all I want is me to... Oh, Dad, what'll I do? It's very simple, very simple. There's a car waiting for you at the front gate. If you hurry and catch up to him... Well, I'll do it. Goodbye, Dad. Good luck, Ellie. Are any of the guests get in your way, Ellie? Knock them down. What is it, Mr. Andrews? Did Ellie forget something? Yes, Wesley, she forgot. She forgot she was going to marry you. She remembered just in time, but she's not going to marry you, Wesley. She's not going to marry you, and I hope you want to make something of it. Here you are, Wesley, 100,000. I'm not contesting that enough, but that's uh, satisfactory, isn't it? Oh, yes, very satisfactory. I ought to punch you in the nose, too, but I'll forget about it. I'm so happy. Oh, goodbye, Mr. Andrews, sir. Don't you even want to know where they were? Uh, no, sir. Then I'll tell you. I just got another wire there in Glen Falls, Michigan. Here's the wire. Up, up in the... Uh, what's holding up the annulment? Don't you realize that even the walls of Jericho can topple? They're both nuts. They certainly are. Isn't it wonderful? I wired it back perfectly legal now for them to topple. Pop. But you're nuts, too. Thanks. Dad, yeah, see, the couple in that cabin are awful peculiar. Peculiar? Crazy as a bass singer, both of them don't even think they're married. Oh, they're married, all right. I've seen the license. Then you get them a rope and an extra blanket. A night like this, too. What do you imagine that's for? I don't know what anything they want is for. I just brought them a trumpet. Trumpet? Yes, one of them toy things. Sent me down to the store to get it. What do they want for the trumpet for? Don't ask me. I never used a trumpet in my life. They just turned out the light. Rope, and an extra blanket, and a trumpet. I can't figure it out. You have been listening to the Candle Playhouse presentation of It Happened One Night, produced by Orson Welles and starring William Powell and Miriam Hopkins. 
In just a moment, Mr. Wells will be back with us, and a moment's time is all I need to remind you how perfectly Campbell's tomato soup meets the question of what soup to serve on almost any and all occasions. When you have friends in for dinner, bright plates of Campbell's tomato soup, steaming and fragrant, lend a gracious and festive air. And as cream of tomato prepared with milk instead of water, it has a richness and a smoothness that fit in delightfully with a gay party mood. And so, when you're having guests, and also when just your family sit down to a quiet meal together, I'm sure you'll want to remember the soup that is most people's favorite. The soup served often and enjoyed always. Campbell's Tomato Soup. And now, here is Orson Welles. And now, ladies and gentlemen, having proved to you, we think that being taken for a bus ride is not necessarily the modern equivalent of being taken for a buggy ride. Though, as a matter of fact, what is generally called a net result is the same. It gives me great pleasure to present to you our guest stars of the evening, Mr. William Powell and Miss Miriam Hopkins. Thank you, Orson Welles. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Orson Welles, and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Powell and Miss Hopkins, of course, are both old friends of the Campbell Playhouse. Mr. Powell, in fact, was once the master of ceremonies very microphone. And Miss Hopkins has favored us with a goodly number of impressive performances. In your behalf, ladies and gentlemen, I propose to welcome them back as actual members of the Campbell Playhouse family and to assure Just them... Just one moment, Austin. There's a small matter I'd like to take up with Mr. Powell first, if you don't mind. You may have noticed, my dear Mr. Peter Powell. And you may have noticed, my dear Miss Ellie Hopkins, that there was a distinct promise of a sequel in the final scene of It Happened One Night, played by your revered father and myself, Reference is made, I may even say that a hope is held out, that the fact that you were to receive a crack in the jaw daily, starting with your nuptials, for your own good and that of your neighbors. So if you'll be good enough... Oh, uh, that's what I wanted to talk about. Just because you happened to have a scene in which I wasn't present, you thought you could be bold and brave and not be held to account for it, didn't please, you? Uh, well, let me tell you... Uh, what? Please, Mr. Paul, Miss Hopkins... Uh, well, he started... And I propose to finish it, too. There must be something I can do, then. Ah, I have it. What have you? Well, nobody's going to talk about what he's going to do to me and think he can get away with it. Well, just because I'm not around when he says Please, it, I... Please, Miss Hawking, Miss Powell, listen just for one moment, Herman. Peter, darling. Ellie, my love. Bill. <laughs> Miriam. I am just a court of domestic relations in swing. Mr. Powell and Miss Hopkins, I want to tell you on behalf of the Campbell Playhouse how delighted we are to have you back with us. I can't imagine a more delightful reunion. It's been grand. <laughs> and you will be back with us again as soon as you can. Of Good. course. <laughs> Thank you very much, William Powell and Miriam Hopkins. Good night. Good night, Orson. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, in tonight's Campbell Playhouse production, also present in the company, were Mr. Everett Sloan, Mr. Ray Collins, Mr. John Houseman, your obedient servant, Miss Virginia Gordon, Mr. Richard Wilson, and Mr. Benny Rubin. Music, as always, was the responsibility of the good doctor Bernard Herman and his wildcats, and now as to next week, as to next Sunday night. Ladies and gentlemen, we offer you our version of one of the most fascinating chronicles, I think, of an English theatrical family. The celebrated Broom Stages by Miss Clemence Dane. As our guest star, we are especially happy to welcome back to the Campbell Playhouse for next week's performance, Miss Helen Hayes, who, as you know, is appearing on the air exclusively with us this season. So until then, until next Sunday night and Broom Stages, my sponsors, the makers of Campbell Soup, and all of us here in the Campbell Playhouse remain, as always, obediently yours. <laughs> Makers of Campbell Soups join Orson Welles in inviting you to be with us in the Campbell Playhouse again next Sunday evening when we present Clements Dane's Broom Stages with our exclusive Campbell Playhouse star, Miss Helen Hayes, as our guest. In the meantime, if you've enjoyed tonight's Playhouse presentation, won't you tell your grocer so tomorrow when you order Campbell's tomato soup? This is Ernest Chappell saying thank you and good night. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System.